I'm Owen. And I'm Sonia. And we had the privilege of going with a team from Champion Forest to Columbia. Um, so every year, um, our church sends a team to Columbia and we go to a remote part of the country and we go to these really remote villages and we just each day in a new village and we set up shop. So one of the, the coolest ministries here at Champion Forest, and it's probably one that a lot, not a lot of people know about, is um, the sewing ministry. And it's this uh, group of ladies, it's actually two group of ladies, one at Champions and one at the Jersey Village campus that uh, get together every week and sew dresses uh, for Haiti and then also for Columbia. Our mission in this whole thing is that's what it's all about and to know that they will pack a suitcase full of little dresses <laughs> and fly down there and spend a week with these people they don't know and witness to them and that these can be a tool makes it worth everything oh, yeah. to, to all of us. And I will tell you that every time Beth finishes a dress, we see a, a dress waved in the air. Another angel gets, gets her dress. dress. <laughs> Sorry. It's cute. You do it okay, every good. time. Yeah. More than anyone. But uh, to me, uh, it was such a blessing. I have been far more blessed than they could yeah, be blessed. Yeah, there's no way. That because I was going through a period of my life where I ne really needed God to give me something that I could be involved in. A lot of us can't go on foreign missions, but we can do our work here, and we can give God our time and our effort, and that can make the difference, where the people who do travel and go to other countries, they don't have the time to do these dresses, and so it's a team work that we can all do what we can do, and we can make a difference and share the gospel from here. I mean, it's just beautiful to see that they've put so much love and care in that, and then also seeing how that has grown into like something so beautiful there in person in Colombia. So I think you know that's what's so beautiful to me, just that love and intentionality that they have. As soon as we got off the bus, the the chief and his family gathered our entire team in a circle, and um, they gave us this cultural dance. The chief and his family, um, and. Uh, First the kids did it, and then the chief um, and his the women of the family did it. So um, it was a really cool moment, especially because of, of how we got to know the chief later on. So, so near the end of this last day of the trip, I heard um, one specific lady who was, was really spending a lot of time giving the dress to each girl as she came up. Um, and she was reading scripture over them. She was... Um, praying over them and and I heard her say to this one specific girl um, that you know just like just like this is a dress for you Christ can clothe you in his own righteousness um, and that girl's father was looking on um, and it was it was the same father that had welcomed us he was the chief uh, he had welcomed us through this cultural dance at the beginning of our day there um, but he was looking on and he was watching his daughter receive this dress and um, he was just moved by the giving of it. He uh, approached our leaders later on and uh, said, what kind of a God loves like this? Like, I want to know that kind of a God. And so, and those leaders shared the gospel with him and, and the man ended up coming to Christ. And so that was an entire village whose leadership was one for the Lord. Right, and that's kind of a beautiful transition, right? It's not only just the family that's being impacted or just that child, it's the whole village. Um, I will also say that um, after the children go through there, you know, they come to BBS and we are able to share the gospel with them and tell them about Christ. Um, it's kind of an interesting uh, story because, you know, somebody might be sharing in English and then that person's story gets translated into Spanish and then it gets translated also into the YU language. So there's kind of like three levels of translation that are going on there. And this one little girl, she stood out to me and she was probably about four or five. Um, and she had on her dress and she was just so excited because you could just see she had the love of Christ inside of her and she had accepted Christ and she was just eager to get into that water. And so she actually took the dress uh, she was wearing it and she wore it to be baptized and you could just see just how beautiful that was. Just such a beautiful picture of, you know, people pouring into that ministry of creating the dress and then people pouring in love and encouragement and truth into her and then her just being so excited to receive all of that and then also be baptized in that. So it was a really beautiful story. 
you know, I don't have any special talents. I'm not you know, some great speaker. Or I'm not somebody that's really great in one specific area or another, but just that the Lord is not requiring greatness. The Lord requires obedience. And so, you know, when he calls you to do something, just being willing and obedient to just say, you know what, like I'm gonna lay it at the altar. Here I am, if you can use me, then use me. And when we're willing to do that, we see great things happen.